Hey, Paige, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, you've got some changes. What's going on in your life? Ooh, well, um, I started at seminary in Fort Wayne, so I've been doing that since March, um, and it's been a little bit of a wild ride, a little bit of a bumpy ride, but that's okay. That's what comes with adjustments and stuff, but I'm really loving my classes, and uh, my professors are great, and they're not paying me to say this, <laughs> so... Yeah, it's going good. And just to be clear, seminary, you're, you're deaconess, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um. So that's that's got to be sort of a, a different beast in in a number of ways. First, I mean, you've got the brand new school, brand new professors, first year starting out in in, in uh, higher learning. Um. But also, you're a deaconess with a whole bunch of uh, seminary students who are, are training to be pastors. Um. And so there's there's sort of a lot of clout going on. Uh. You you picked a pretty interesting topic for today, didn't you? Yeah. Um. Imposter syndrome. Um, I can relate. <laughs> yeah. So I did something that is a little bit non-traditional. I started in the spring, which most people start in the fall. And um, yeah, there's not really an orientation per se. Like they give you your classes and they're like, great, have at it, have fun, go, go do the thing. And I was like, fantastic. I've done this before. I've started undergrad in the SEM. No big deal. Yeah, this um, in the spring. It, I'm like, yeah, this is a lot different. But it's it's different more so in I know that I know the things. But when I hear other people talk about the things, it's like, oh, my goodness, they're so much smarter than me. What am I doing here? Like, I don't belong here. <laughs> I am to this day still deeply intimidated by my professors. Um, and I'm afraid to to speak in front of them because I'm convinced that I, I am a fraud and everybody is is pretty sure and just playing playing along to be nice to me. Um, how do you start to first, I guess, what is imposter syndrome, even though it kind of makes sense if you think about it? Yeah, well, um, everybody experiences imposter syndrome a little bit differently, so it's a little bit hard to generalize, but from my perspective, um, imposter syndrome is when you're in a place and you just pr pretend like you're good enough to be there, like, and all these other people, they know what they're supposed to be doing, like, they got the directions to the game, and you're just watching them trying to figure out how the game is played, and you're hoping that no one realizes that you don't have the directions to the game. And yeah, it's just very intimidating. And it, let me tell you, I cried about it a lot. <laughs> There's, I, I mean, the the pop psychology answer to imposter syndrome is tell yourself it's not true. Obviously, you're fine or you wouldn't be there, um, which obviously silences all of the whispers that you have in your own head and, and makes you feel 100% better. There, there are sort of <laughs> ways that you can check your your heart, your feelings against reality, and those are good and proper things. But where is, where is Jesus in, in imposter syndrome? What, is, what does this have to say with, with the body of Christ, with, with who we are as, as his members? I mean, we're all members of the same body. Like none of us are greater, lesser than the other. Like we're all learning. Christ has, like, there is no imposter syndrome in Christ. Like you can't just look at Christ and be like, oh man, this dude knows so much. Well, yeah, he's God. He's God. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's got to know that much. So it's like, you can't just look at him and go, oh, he'll never accept. Like he can't know that I'm a sinner. I'm pretending like He's got to think that I'm perfect. Like, he already knows mm -hmm. like, that you and, can't just go through life and be like, oh my goodness, like Jesus has to think I'm perfect because there's there's a reason we have this thing called Easter that we just did. So nice. It, it also plays to then to the the followers of Christ, to the Christians. Uh, so if he is the head, we are the body and individually members of it. And here the Bible actually speaks a lot of things that, that sort of address imposter syndrome. First, it talks about we as the body of Christ are individually members of it. And so there are different parts of the body. Not everybody gets to be the eye. Not everybody gets to be the hand. And that's not only 
okay. That's actually, that's better. Um, and so if, if you're going to spend all of your time sort of comparing yourself to others, uh, first, you're ignoring the things that God has given you, um, that, that you actually have a, a worth and a value, not in simply what you do, because, you know, everybody needs an appendix except when you don't, um, but, but because you're redeemed, because he has paid a price for you, not based on what you can do, but based on, on well, not gold or silver, but his holy and precious blood is innocent suffering and death. That's actually what ascribes values to a thing, not what it does, but what someone is willing to pay for it. That, that's why diamonds cost money. Um, they don't do anything that, that glitter can't. Um, but uh, when we, we also have then to, a chance to start to look at each other, what does it mean that Jesus invites the least of these to his side and, and says that we ought to receive the, the kingdom of God as a little child when it comes to imposter syndrome? I mean, it's trust is what it boils down to like the least of these to the greatest of these like if you don't have that trust that jesus died for your sins and that justification sanctification all those great christian words that we use the lutheran words that we use um like if you don't have that and you're looking at christ as this big thing that you put on a pedestal then you're not really getting the greatest of these to the least of these you're just thinking that everyone's greater and you're the only one that's lesser it's for everyone like it's not just for oh that person who said something really smart in class how in the heck did they know that it's for you still sitting there you're all still students and you're gonna learn and it's like with jesus like you don't have to, he's there already. Like you don't have to prove anything. And that's the wonderful thing about our God. Absolutely. When we talk then about imposter syndrome, there is that at least, again, sort of my, my perceived reality inside of this is that I am worthless. And Christ very clearly speaks that I am not. That that actually the place where I am is, is where he has knit me in and, and it's where I belong. And, and it's where I have value because he paid for it. And, and more than that, um, vocation actually speaks a, a pretty great promise to imposter syndrome. Um, we always try and measure things by our works and, and not not the gifts that God gives. It's, it's something inside of us. And so I'll say I am really a good pastor if I preach better than everyone else, or if at least I, I preach confidently and, and never mess up. Um, when in, in reality, uh, I am a pastor because God ordained me and sent me out. I am a husband because I am married. I am a father because God gave me children. If he has promised not only to, to work inside of these vocations, but to work efficaciously, the measurement of whether or not you are enough is, is actually, again, still fulfilled in God has promised to get this thing done through you. And so although it feels like you have no idea what it is that you're doing, he has still promised to work and your cluelessness perceived or otherwise can't actually, can't actually stop God from getting done what he really needs to, right? Right. Because when we kind of play into that cluelessness of like, oh my goodness, I can't do anything and I have to be better than this person, or like you said, rely on our works, then we're completely cutting God out of the equation altogether and saying, hey, God, I don't need you. I can figure this out on my own. I can be my own God. And that, uh, I mean, that All never right. works. Kate, <laughs> you have convicted me. Um, so when we, when we catch ourselves in, in this self-talk, what not just do we say to ourselves but what do we need to go in here because there's a difference between just sort of telling yourself a truth over and over again until you sort of believe that it's true and actually hearing it from the outside it's it's why the church preaches what what should we go in here i mean always lean towards the gospel lean on the gospel like that's what it's there for lean on your christian friends they will preach that gospel to you that's what they are there for like you're not supposed to do this thing called life alone you are there with the company of others that help you through that lead you to that gospel that remind you hey look this is already done you don't need to work or worry about this like if god has called you to this thing thanks be to god let's do this thing Amen. Yeah. Um, so Paige, uh, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna take your deaconess classes. I'm, I'm gonna go about my day with a pastor, with, with, with a pastor for me, with a pastor for you. Um, somebody to actually tell you not just, you know, that you're doing a good job and it's not as bad as you think. Um, th those are true. And, and honestly, those are true, but also that your worth and, and your value is not based on you fulfilling the law good enough, but in Christ being enough for you. Um, imposter syndrome is never going to be conquered by the law because there's always going to be a situation that is going to come up where you feel 
incapable. And the answer to that is not, I will do better until I have, I have uh, fulfilled all things. It's that Jesus already has. And, and then he'll drag you along to the resurrection. If he is risen and, and we will rise, then we got to get there one way or another. And, and it's going to come with some bumps and it's going to come with some failures, but it's also going to come with some forgiveness. And that's the part that's ultimately going to endure long past everything that we built falls apart anyway. Mm -hmm, exactly. Paige, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.